All right, welcome to the sixth video in our series on creating our first Django application. I'm Avi and welcome back. Now we left off where we had hard coded some HTML and we were basically displaying um, two questions, what's your age and what's your name? And that's fantastic. But the thing is we need some functionality now. We want it so that when the user clicks on a question, they're taken to a page. Now hopefully you have some HTML experience, maybe you've taken a few video YouTube videos on that, or you might need some help. But if you have some basic HTML experience, maybe anchor tags, paragraph tags, that's fantastic, okay? Because that's what you normally would require when creating a Django website. So the way this works is Py or Python or Django has created something known as the Django template system. And the way that works is it separates your Python code and your web design. So right now we need an anchor tag. And what that anchor tag will enable us to do is by clicking on a question, it'll take us to a different web page, all right? And the only way we can do this is through an HTML document. So how do we link our Python code to an HTML document? The answer is Jinja, all right? We don't have to install anything, but to just show you what I mean, it's called Django Templates. First link should be the Django documentation. And if you scroll down, you'll understand, you know, alternative is Jinja 2. Django comes with its own DTL. Both of them are very similar in their own ways. I personally will be using DTL, but if you want to try out Jinja, definitely do so. Now what I want you to do is right click on your post directory, hit new and new directory. And I want you to call this templates, okay? So we created a templates directory. Inside of this, I want you to create a new directory called polls. I know it might seem a bit redundant, why are we creating a new polls directory inside of our already polls directory above over here? The reason for this is because in case you ever have a third party app, right? And they have the same .html file as you do. For example, if we had an index.html, they had an index.html, things would clash. And that's why we have to put our .html files in their respective app folders. So go ahead and right click on your polls directory, the new one inside of the templates directory, hit new HTML file. So I'm gonna call this index.html because that's normally what is done. Hit okay and fantastic. Again, you should have some basic HTML experience. I'm not saying it's a must, but I'll explain the tags I use just in case you don't know. Now, while using DTL, um, there's a few things or a few basic concepts. Um, all condition statements or all main statements start with curly braces. So if I was creating an if statement, I'd say curly brace, and then I'd always go to the percent. So curly brace percent if latest questions, that's the variable we created last lecture, and then we close with a percent sign and then a curly braces. So open curly, open percent, some if statement, end percent, end curly, we're going to say do something, that's just some blank text, and then we're going to say an else, right? This is an if else, so again, open curly, open percent, else, and then end percent, end curly, we want to do, do something else, and then last but not least, to end the if statement, we're going to say percent, end if, and then percent curly braces. So this is a very basic if else statement and I created this just to show you guys how it works or how DTL works. Now the next thing we have to do is display our questions through maybe a loop, suppose a for loop. How would we do that? Well, the way that would work is we are going to say um, a for loop over here, for, so percent, my bad, percent for question in question or in latest questions. All right, so the next step is now to display our questions, but not just that, we wanna add links. We wanna make it so that when the user clicks on a question, they go to another screen, probably the detailed view. How do we do that? Well, to list the questions, first of all, we're gonna use a for loop. Let's go ahead and write that. So percent for question in latest questions, okay? Percent and then curly braces. What are we gonna do? Well, we want to create, um, first of all, let's go ahead and show the question. So I'm going to bold this 
Um, we're going to say question dot question text, right? That basically gives us the question text. Whoops. All right. So this basically is going to return us each question's text in a nice format that's bolded. And how do we end the for loop? We're going to say end for. Okay. So percent and four percent curly braces. Now we're showing these questions, right? But now we have to add a link. How do we add link? Well, we can do that by adding an anchor tag in front of this and make sure you put the ending anchor tag after the end of the bold tag. Okay. So you should have a B slash B slash a. Now we need to reference this anchor to go to part of our website. Our detailed view, if you remember, was slash polls slash the question ID, right? So currently our site is our normal localhost slash polls, and that's our site. That's the index.html. But now what do we want? Well, we want to go to the ID of the question. So slash one, slash two, slash three. We want to add that href inside of this. So the way that's going to happen is a href is equal to, we want to add the slash polls, slash, and then question ID. So to add any variable name inside of text or inside of a string or a link, you're going to say question.id inside of double curly braces. Okay. So slash polls slash question.id. All right. And that is pretty much it. Um, my bad over here, actually, I was supposed to add double curly braces to this variable as well. Whenever you're adding a variable in this HTML doc using DTL or Jinja, you're going to be using double curly braces to reference that. So now we have for question and latest questions, make it so that the link goes to poll slash the question ID, and then we're showing the question text. All we have to do now is put this inside of our if statement. So command X, command V, and then let's go ahead and print this out. So else P you don't have any questions inside or you don't have any questions, please add some. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. And last but not least to, you know, make our HTML a bit better. What I'm going to be doing is I'll add a list an unordered list to be specific. So if you don't know what this means, don't worry. Basically the UL tag is used to reference an unordered list. Okay. And then the li tag, which is right over here, the li tag basically means list item. So whenever you're adding a unordered list, each object inside of your list will have the li tag in front of it. And then once our for loop is over, what do we want? We want, um, I believe it's going to be end ul, so slash ul. Awesome. So save this, and that's fantastic. Now, what's the last step? We've created our template file index of HTML. It's fantastic. It's going to show us the Python code that we want, except we haven't, you know, linked the index of HTML file to the views.py file. How do we do that? Well, that's how, that's what we're going to do right now. So head over to your views.py file. All right. So the first thing we have to do is load our template. Okay. Once we have our template, we'll get the data that we have to push to the template. And then finally, we'll push that data to the template. So over here, we can delete our output statement since we don't no longer need it, but we still need our latest questions variable. <clears throat> so the loader template, what we're going to say template is equal to loader dot get template. Or actually, you know what? First, I have to import that. So from Django dot template. We need to import two things. We're going to import loader, and then we're also going to import something called request context. Okay. So we're going to say template is equal to loader dot get template. All right. And our template name, if you remember, was polls slash index HTML. So basically what's that's what that's doing is we're going to the polls folder and then we're just going to the index HTML. All right. So once we have the index of HTML file, the next thing we have to do is get the data or get the data that we have to pass into the index of HTML file. So that's where the request context comes in. We're going to say context 
is equal to request context and then you're going to pass in request as a parameter and then inside of this we're going to create a dictionary okay so one sec open up this dictionary and the only value that we're passing is going to be the latest questions so latest questions that's what we're calling it and what's the value for this it's going to be latest questions the variable that we have right now okay so all this does is it creates a dictionary where the key latest questions has the value of our variable latest questions and now the last thing we have to do is we need to pass this data into our template so we're gonna say return HTTP response and that's where something called rendering comes in template dot render okay and then we're gonna pass in context fantastic so let's save this my server is already running if you haven't already just go ahead and say Python manage.py run server let's head over here refresh all right, this looks fantastic. So we have, what's your age, what's your name? As you can see, we have these bullet points because of our UL and LI. Select one, we have, this is a detailed view of question number two, and then detailed view of question number one. This is actually pretty great. So if you're wondering why is question number two first and why question number one is second, the reason for that is because we set it by pub date. So basically whatever we entered last, that's gonna come first. Um, you know, it's I think it's like stack or queue first in last out. That's the way it works right now. So taking a look at this, it's fantastic. But there is one way we can make this code better. Right now we're creating this template. We have the context that we're passing in and then we're rendering it, except there's a shortcut. Okay, so we can remove this template line. Go ahead and do that. We're going to delete this template line and we're going to change something in the sense that we have context and remove request context as well. I actually remove the entire thing. We're gonna say context is equal to curly brackets. And then we're gonna say latest questions, okay? Colon, again, the variable, so latest questions. And then we're gonna use a very neat feature called render. So instead of HTTP response, we're only gonna be using render and in render we're going to pass in the request we're going to pass in our template name which is polls slash index.html and last but not least we're going to pass in our context isn't that simple instead of those three lines of code we've made it into two and much much shorter so we can delete this from django.template import loader comma request context since we don't need it go ahead and save it Let's go back to our uh, polls, refresh, it still works. All right, this is fantastic guys. Let's do a quick recap. We learned about templates and how we can use Django's template system to write code, especially to get Python variables and manipulate those Python data into displaying it on an HTML web page. And then we learned how to connect our views.py to our index.html by something known as rendering these templates. Awesome job guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions so far on anything we've covered, definitely leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.